Hello everyone, in this video we'll be solving two problems from the topic of fluid statics. Okay, so these two problems are related to the force acting on a body. Uh, let's begin with problem one. In this problem we have been given a heavy cylinder that is resting on a smooth surface. It separates two liquids of densities 2 rho and 3 rho. So we have to find the height h, that is the height of the 2 rho column for the equilibrium of the cylinder. Okay guys, so for solving this problem, I'll be using an important result. And that result is that if we, if we want to find the force on submerged surface, keep in mind surface in a fluid, then it is simply the pressure at the centroid of the surface or area times the projected area. Okay, so this is something that I derived in an earlier video. What we're trying to do here is figuring out the force that the fluid exerts on this cylinder on this part of the cylinder and similarly on this part of the cylinder and then we can write the equilibrium conditions okay okay guys so i want you to consider an fbd of this fluid element over here so we are only talking about this particular element okay of the fluid now this fluid element over here is clearly in equilibrium and uh, the fluid towards uh, towards the right of this fluid element will apply some force on this vertical surface of the fluid element and the cylinder will apply a force will apply some force on this curved surface and similarly, the ground will apply a force on this horizontal surface. Why is this fact clear that the horizontal force that this cylinder applies on this curved surface must be balanced by the force that the water applies on this vertical surface? What I'm trying to say is, so let's say the cylinder applies a horizontal force of FH on this curved surface. So this has to be equal to the force uh, that the fluid on the right applies on this vertical surface. Let's call it as F dash. Now F dash we can easily write uh, by using this result. This surface, it's a line from our view and, and it goes into the plane as well, right? So it's a rectangular surface area, right? So its center is simply at a distance of R by two, right? Because the height of the column is R. So the center is at a distance of R by two. And so the pressure at a distance of R by two is going to be rho G R by two. And if you multiply that with the area of that rectangular cross section, which is going to be R times L. Let's assume the length into the plane, length of the cylinder is L. Okay, so and now why am I considering gauge pressure? And uh, well, the reason for that is the atmospheric pressure is acting on each and every point of the cylinder. So there is no point in writing that, you know, it at the end cancels out if, if you think about it. Like even if you go inside water, the pressure is P naught plus something, right? So we only have to care about the plus something because the P naught times dA will be cancelled out throughout the cylinder. That's why we are working with gauge pressures. Okay, so basically we have uh, found out uh, the value of FH. So we now have the horizontal component of the force that the liquid applies on the cylinder, a uh, liquid on the right. By using exactly the similar argument, we can find the force applied by the left fluid. And this was the force applied by the right fluid. And similarly, we can find the force applied by the left fluid, right? Oh, and by the way, the density of this fluid is three rho. So I missed the three factor over there. So, and uh, by the left fluid, it is similarly going to be two rho h square square L divided by two. Okay. By using exactly the only thing that is changing is H is replaced with R. Now, uh, these are the two, these two are the only horizontal forces acting on the cylinder. So which means these must be equal, right? To ensure equilibrium. So FHR must equal FHL. Okay. So, and after solving, you'll get the value of H as square root of three by two times R, which was the required answer. So now let's move on to the next question. So this is also similar to the previous problem, but a bit more challenging. So basically we have a plate that is in the shape of a quarter cylinder of radius R and length L. This plate is hinged at C to a vertical wall and can rotate freely about C. The end A of the plate is tied to the wall using two horizontal cables. The other cables is parallel to A and the two cables are placed symmetrically. Okay. The space between the wall and the plate is filled completely with water. Neglect the weight of the plate and calculate the tension with each cable okay so we have to find the tension uh, okay guys so as the hinge forces are involved in this case we cannot simply you know use the force method like we did in the previous case because we have to calculate torque as well right and if we have to find out the torque then we have to know the line of action of the force as well okay guys now i want you guys to imagine the fluid fpd in this case so what are the forces acting on this fluid element so now the p naught times a is acting at all points so we just ignore that uh, the plate is going to be applying a force on this fluid element the left wall is going to be applying a force on this fluid element top uh, at the top the gauge pressure is zero so we can simply ignore that and then we also have the weight of the fluid so can we say that the horizontal component of the force that the plate applies on the fluid is equal to the force that the wall applies on the fluid and the vertical component of the force that the plate applies on the fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid so let's call the horizontal force as fh and let's say the call let's call the vertical force as fv and let's call and let's say the weight of the fluid is w and let's say the net force and the and let's say the force that the wall applies on the fluid element is f 
wall. Uh, so, so we can easily write F wall in one step using the previous result. It's going to be the pressure at the center of the left surface and that is going to be rho g r by 2 multiplied by the area of the element which is going to be r times l right so fh is equal to rho g r square so we have figured out fh now fv is simply going to be the weight of the fluid that is going to be the density times its volume now we have also determined the vertical force this okay guys so now how do we determine the line of action now guys imagine that the resultant of these two forces is f Okay, so I'm going to be claiming something. The claim is that this F, the resultant of these two, it must pass through the point O. And I'll explain why. Okay, consider any small area of the fluid element here. In this area, the force that the plate applies on the fluid is going to be normal to the surface. And as the, and as the surface is circular, then it must pass through the normal to the surface must pass through the center. So I'm going to remove the W and the yeah. So let's say this is FV and this is FH and the resultant must pass through the center of the circle. Okay, now let's call this angle as some theta. So this angle is going to be theta as well. So we can simply write tan theta as Fv divided by Fh. Okay, and this comes out to be pi by two. Okay guys, this was the force that the plate applies on the fluid. Now, if I ask the opposite that what is a force that the fluid applies on the plate, it will be just opposite of this force, right? So let's say that force is going to be F net. So, okay, so what are the forces on the plate now? So one is obviously F net, and the other is the tension force that is pulling the cable up. These two are the only forces that are provide any, providing any useful torque, right? Because the P0 terms just can get cancelled out. So they are useless. Now let's try to determine the perpendicular distance from the point C of our line of action. So we know this vertical distance over here is R. This angle is theta. So the arm of our force is going to be R cos theta. So now let's balance the torque. F net times R cos theta uh, must equal 2t and why is it 2t guys because uh, there are two strings right one behind one that is into the plane that is not visible in the diagram but there are two cables and therefore 2t uh, this multiplied by r as the distance of uh, as the force is acting at a distance of r from the point c okay and from here we'll get t equals okay guys and uh, f net cos theta is just a horizontal component that is fh so final answer is going to be half of fh so this would be our answer so that's it for this video guys if you enjoyed please like and subscribe and Thanks for watching.